federal government leaders are quick to point out that 85 percent of cyber infrastructure in the U.S. is in private sector hands. Robert Baer is Chief Information Security Officer in Residence for the Americas at Zscaler. I ask him what message he sees the federal government sending to the private sector about cyber now. Now is the time where the government has really started paying attention and getting the message out to the private sector providers where the government has oftentimes little visibility and also little authority to uh, direct them to take certain actions. And um, for me personally, on the military side, you know, I think any conflict in the Pacific probably starts in Charleston, South Carolina and moves westward across the United States. And along the way, you have dual use critical infrastructure supporting that military deployment until you can get it into the Pacific, into the, into the fight. So I think the military holistically has started to look at where that dual use critical infrastructure is um, and started to really map out uh, where they can come in and support from a, from a visibility standpoint. And so I think it all starts from gaining visibility into where that infrastructure is, is going to be necessary. And then from a cyber perspective, really getting into the, helping the critical infrastructure provider get into the network to start to understand where their vulnerabilities are and then help them through best practices to harden, harden their networks. If I'm thinking about it geographically, according to the chain that you just laid out, I'm thinking Charleston to San Diego to Honolulu to the South China Sea. Am I thinking about it the right way or should I not be thinking about it geographically? Should I be thinking about it in some other way, in some other domain maybe? Yeah, no, I think geographically is fine, but there are probably other critical points along that path. Uh, okay. Say Houston, for example, or multiple train stations and perhaps Arkansas or that where the Air Mobility Command is. Um, so I think, you know, the infrastructure is not, you know, in a geographically straight line into yeah. the South China Sea. And then and then once you get into the Pacific, you're in what's called the, the second island chain from the Guam uh, all the way down. And so those Guam, Saipan, Tinian, Yap, they all have, they're all strategically important to the United States in, in that region. So um, I think we really need to take a comprehensive and holistic view of it. And if they're potentially valuable to us, then they're potentially valuable to adversaries as well. Yeah, 100%, of course. And I think, you know, we've heard uh, Director Ray at the FBI say that uh, the Chinese strategy is to escalate, to de-escalate. And so that's sowing chaos uh, in the United States. And, um, you know, from, from Volt Typhoon, whether that looks like it's attacks on uh, port facilities, uh, the electrical grid, or perhaps even something in the finance sector to not, to not only deter the United States military from intervening in a Taiwan scenario, but to shape Americans' uh, views of whether we should be intervening at all. Yeah. What are the implications for protecting those individual nodes on that? And maybe nodes is a technical term that I shouldn't use there. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, the implications are, you know, critical infrastructure is disparate, right? And oftentimes it's controlled by municipalities or small uh, local governments or, you know, small private sector, maybe even very large private sector companies. So um, I, I think there are, are several implications, right? A lot of the smaller ones are under-resourced, and so how do you find ways to um, get them the resources they need to gain the visibility they need, and then to implement best cyber practices, whether that's you know micro segmentation, zero trust, or even just uh, vulnerability and patching of, of those critical IT systems. Um, I think the other thing that we're seeing is uh, you know I know you've talked about cloud security this week, and on the IT side, we're seeing a consolidation in the cloud. But on the OT side, you're actually seeing almost the opposite, where uh, these systems are becoming more disparate and more connected. And so you have a, a larger challenge of gaining uh, visibility across an entire technology stack and bringing it into somewhere like a security operations center where you can action it. Does that visibility issue also manifest itself as potentially a vulnerability issue because you have m more potential access points? Yeah, 100%, right? And so if you're operating at a substation and it may have some sort of 5G connectivity or maybe even connected through a, a VSAT or, or something like that, and you don't have visibility of what's happening on that device on the, on the OT side, um, you know, that's definitely a potential vulnerability for that. All right. What should agencies watch moving forward? What potential evolution in the threat landscape, 
or in the technological landscape or whatever's coming that people should be watching for? Yeah, I think from the threat side, um, this what we've seen in the Pacific and elsewhere is is non-traditional cyber activity, right? Like before, we were looking for indicators of compromise and then looking for evidence of exfiltration or encryption, if it's ransomware or whatever it is. Now you're looking at an adversary who's sitting on a network and sitting there low and slow and just wants to maintain access. So some of the telemetry looks very different. Um, on the on the technology side to protect it, I mean, I, I think you want to move towards things that we're talking about on the IT side, which is which is zero trust. You want secure remote access. You want to be able to patch those OT systems without exposing the protocols and, and uh, OT specific technology on the backside of that. Um, and, and then you really want to move through, through like basically an o OT maturity model where you first start by gaining the visibility and the censoring, and then you move through segmentation and like true zero trust uh, network access. And then finally, um, the ability to respond to incidents organically. Robert Baer of Zscaler.